Once again, you join us in ever so sunny Wales, where we are looking at resto mods, modernised classics, call them what you will. In this special video, we are featuring an Alfa Romeo coupe named the GTAR by a company called Alphaholics, a Porsche 911 modified and modernised by Tuthill Porsche, and a revitalised Jensen Interceptor with a new supercharged Chevy V8 engine. Now this is not a traditional track battle because some cars are deliberately faster and more track oriented than others here, but out of interest, which is fastest? And what are they all like? Right lads, can you hear me? Because I think I am in the uh, raciest car here. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that mate. Um, although I think I'm probably racier than him. <laughs> James, what? What are you in? Apart from a car with very, very bright headlights, what are you in? Uh, now that's because it's got a foot operated uh, main beam switch, which I keep hitting with my left foot instead of using it to uh, slow the car down with the brakes. I'm in a Jensen Interceptor, which is, uh, it's very, very fast in a straight line, but it's more gentleman's club than racer, I think. The good thing about the headlight flash is, at least if you are going to run into us, we know it's coming. Yes, yeah, so I like to make an entrance. So what? So how how fast in a straight line or otherwise is the Jensen? Right. Well, I have unbelievably, given this is a late 60s design, I have a 556 horsepower supercharged LSA 6.2 litre V8. So Jensen claim 174 miles an hour, which is uh, a lot, and it should do 0 to 60 in about 3.8 seconds. Yeah, that sounds like quite a lot as well to me. Is it? It's still four wheel drive and everything, is it? Uh, no, that's an FF, so this is, uh, is rear-wheel drive, um, but I do have race logic traction control, which, uh, just to be fair to everyone, um, I've switched off because that's a sensible thing to do. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Excellent. Uh, Storm, when he runs into the back of you, what will he be running into? Something very expensive, um, an old 911, right? But uh, a lovely one for all that. It's not actually... This one's from, from Tuthill, uh, Tuthill Porsche, so... Um, they've got a pretty good reputation for doing this sort of thing. It is a 72 911E um, and it's been left fairly standard engine and gearbox wise. It's got cheeky pipes on and it's got carbs rather than mechanical injection. But other than that, it's, it's running standard engine. So, so we're probably up to about 170, 175 horsepower. Um, it weighs just over a tonne. It's held by 11, mate. It, it will do very well but it won't keep up with either of you, I suspect, if you kind of both get on it. Yeah, this, I think, on a track ought to be the, ought to be the fastest, because it's 800 and, about 870 kilos, something like that, and I've got 240 horsepower, so it's 290 brake per ton. It's on very small wheels, but the whole lot is seam welded, uh, but then they've put carbon fibre bonnet and doors on, and there's a 12-point cage inside very racy seats. It feels really racy and the engine's been operated to a 2.3 litre Alpha 75 based thing, twin cam, with their own throttle bodies. The, the result, so the resulting price of this, right, is I think about, because it all varies slightly, doesn't it? So prices start from 200 grand plus VAT plus your donor. This is 260 plus VAT plus donor car, which makes it easily a three maybe even starting with a four. Is that round about where yours are as well? Yeah, so the Jensen is it's somewhere north of 300,000, as this one is, these Interceptor are. But, you know, you do get totally retrimmed, the shell's redone. It's got its own independent rear suspension setup, adjustable dampers, um, ABS, as well as the traction control. So, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it, so that justifies the price. Yeah, with this one, it's kind of... Um... You take, you take your page of money and takes your choice, really. And this one is 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 a bit a bit more sort of low end mechanically, but very very nice sort of interior and very very nice um, uh, cosmetically. And it's insured for a figure beginning with a three, with five other figures after it. So so it's kind of comparable with what yours cost, but um, probably not. Uh, probably maybe in a slightly different way. All right, mate. Well, let's uh, let's well let's find out. I'll. Um... I'll shut up and we'll crack on. So let's see what this little GTAR is like. It's running very skinny-ish tyres, 195.55s on 15-inch rims, but it's really little, really little. That twin cab makes a terrific noise, doesn't it? So this 72 911E, remember, 
170 horsepower thereabouts. I mean, it doesn't really, on paper, stand a chance against either of these cars, does it? You've got a 550 horsepower V8 behind me and a nearly 300 but ton Alpha in front of me, and I, I should not stand a chance. But it's a 911. I don't know if you've heard, but they're quite good. Oh, well, to begin with, you really can't beat the sound of that, can you? Porsche Classics on carbs. It's kind of almost worth the price of admission all on its own, that is, isn't it? Oh, I'm suspecting that these guys are going to get away from me a little bit here. That Porsche looks nicely hunkered down, so does the Alpha. This is moving around a little bit, but on the straights. I mean, 556 brake horsepower, even in something that weighs quite a bit more than these two in front, is a fair amount. And just listen to it, that is proper old school American iron we're listening to there. The throttle response is mega, it's loud. Real bite from the brake pedal, so you can really just give it exactly the amount that you want on a, on a downshift. There's no power assisted steering in this. You can get it as an option. The weight distribution is about 58% front, 42 rear. So it's slightly front biased. Runs Alphaholic's own limited slip diff. They've made loads of changes to the front and rear suspension, but it still has a live axle, which they say telegraphs oversteer really nicely. And it does. It does. You can absolutely feel this is a short light car which isn't always great for telling you how quickly the rear is trying to overtake the front this really tells you what's going on so much feedback so much feel you can just this is amazing so it revs to what seven and a bit the other cars are turning into a spec really lean on these brakes hard, trail them into the corner and then, as far as I can tell, have as little or as much lock as you want. And I'm using everything it's got and yes the Alpha is disappearing up the road a little bit but this thing's really good on the brakes and you can heel and tow perfectly down the box so I think I might I might stand a little bit of a chance of keeping up. And of course, if I can, it'll have a lot to do with what Tuttles have done to the suspension of this gun. Now remember, this is still kind of series, series three 911, so old generation car. Three 964, it's what they call a long nose, long wheelbase early car. So it's still got the torsion bar, springs, They've abraded those, they've put some abrasive dampers in it, and it's running lower than it should do and stiffer, and it's obviously got bigger wheels and tyres and proper motorsport brakes on it, which is why it stops so well, really well. And if I'm honest, it feels a bit sort of firm and a little bit wooden at times on the road, but it's doing really well around here. You'd be amazed how hard you can drive on a track, how much grip it's got, and how sort of light and agile it feels, even though. Yeah, you have to work the steering, it's heavy unassisted steering. And you get out of it what you're prepared to physically put in. Yeah, okay, so the Alpha's disappearing. I better do a bit more to keep up with him, I think. The brakes are ABS backed, the pedal's quite long, and it takes a fair bit to slow down. This is the bit where I'm gonna lose out. Oh yeah. Now it has a limited slip differential, but I think we could probably tweak and tweak up those adjustable dampers, get it a bit firmer because it does roll around a bit, but it's fairly composed once you get it set up. But with the automatic gearbox, there is an auto function and a manual override, but it's not working at the moment, the manual override, so I'm having to rely on what the, uh, the gearbox wants to do. I am starting just to lose the Alpha, well the Alpha's gone, but the Porsche is still there. I'm using that power just out of the corners. Here we go down the straights. <laughs> Flipping it, it's quite quick, but the brakes are there. But I really don't want to um, have an air-cooled flat six added to the, the big V8 out the front. 
sort of deals in neutral steer, if you like, you know, you just set it up and drift it through when you see cars racing at classic car festivals. That seems to be where this little GTA likes to be, that sort of, that sort of angle as you set it up and then drive it through the corner on neutral or just opposite lock. It's such a noisy car. Wow, it's good though, and it does feel like it's got loads of integrity. It does not feel like an old baggy car. It's so tight, as well it might be because to all intents and purposes, the stuff underneath it is beautifully maintained and new. What an engine. The other cars, you can forget them. They're just a speck in the distance. I mean, I know what people say about old 911s, but on this evidence, there is nothing to worry about. God, what a gorgeous thing. And to think this is just the tip of the iceberg of what they can do. I mean, if you ever get the chance to go and pay them a visit and see the cars they've got in their workshop and just look at the work they can do on, on the suspension of these cars. You can get mad TTX adjustable dampers, incredible hardware to put in. And this is, this is really ordinary by their standards. And it's a 47 year old car for crying out loud. You should not be able to do this with it. So it looks like I'm giving Diz and the Jensen plenty to do through the corners, but he's deploying his V8 quite effectively on the straights. Commitment is the wrong word. You just need a gentle touch. This is old school, slow in and then very fast out. That's fine, it's fine. It's long pedal travel, but the brakes are there need to be ever so gentle on the corners. With the traction control dial then it's brilliant, you can just floor it, but because there is so much torque, it does kill the power quite a lot. Oh, that's a lot of car to get turned in there. Oh, you fighter. Yeah, when it starts to go, it moves around a lot. There's lots of body movement, but again, I think, I suspect the dampers are in their softest setting. We could probably tweak those if we had time. But that little moment has cost me quite a lot. Storm's got away in the 911. The Alpha is a red speck on the horizon now. That thing is absolutely motoring around here. But you know, I've, I'm having fun. I've got busy. It's really quick. It's, it's hard to describe what it's like compared to other modern cars. Because nothing does quite what this does. Nothing quite, nothing quite has the throttle response. You know, there are front engine rear drive cars with limited slip diffs like BMW M2 competition would I suppose be the modern interpretation of a car like this. But it weighs nearly twice as much as this car. So of cars that weigh as little as this, you're talking about things like, I don't know, an Elise, an Alpha 4C maybe. There's just not a lot. It feels really tied down. Everything else is half a lap behind already. Might come out of those corners pretty quick though. Because once you're on the throttle of these things, it gets so stable. It's just a little bit adjustable. Through the slower stuff, it's lovely. What a lovely car. It's just so much texture and intrigue to the, to the driving experience, you know. With modern stuff, increasingly, it doesn't even matter what you do with the controls. The car just looks after you. you get it all wrong, do it all wrong, it won't make the slightest bit of difference, but with this thing you're back in a place where, where what you do matters, but not quite as much as the way you do it. <laughs> so you're squeezing the throttle pedal, just so you don't overfeed the engine through the carbs, and you're feeling away at the front tyres to get an idea of the grip, and you're squeezing the brake, managing your way down the gearbox, Investing so much physically in the steering, and then your confidence is growing all the time. Don't want to outbreak myself. That 911 just got the traction. And got the traction. Six-speed auto. There's an eight-speed auto coming, and the guys who developed this car say it's a cracker. It's much smoother. This one does tend to thud home shifts occasionally. <laughs> okay, now just, I'm just losing lap time now. 
being very silly. And that 911's got away. I'm going to claim the 911's getting away, not because of the Jensen. Not because the Jensen's deficient in any way, it's because I'm driving like a child. It's greasy on this fast gear corner here, and you sometimes get a little shift from the gearbox like that, kicking down. You don't want that mid-corner. Oh, I think he's gone. Too much mucking about. Come on, Jensen. It's so fast in a straight line, so fast. Just going to nurse the brakes a bit here because it's a big old car. And it will do track work, but it's not being set up for track work. We're perhaps being just a little bit unfair to it today. Where's that Alfa Romeo? I've got to stop looking ahead for the Alfa Romeo. I'm going to keep checking my mirrors now. But there's a really progressive build-up of weight in the steering. When it goes in and out of grip, it does it. It regains grip relatively quickly, unless you just stay on the throttle and ride it out. It takes a little bit of confidence on a wet track, but if you stay with it, it's really benign, really trustworthy. I love it, because that's an 80 mile an hour corner, and it's just drifting in the old fashioned sense of the word, not the new, the new fangled sense as you and I would know it of a tweaked up Supra with a thousand horsepower. It drifts through a corner, as in it glides through corners. It's just mega. And the three 400,000 pound question. Look, I mean, you can sense the amount of work that has gone into this car. There's an astonishing amount of work by some very talented people. And that all costs money to do. And the result is a car that costs the same, say, as a Lamborghini Aventador. Are you having more fun in this than you would have in a Lamborghini Aventador, even though that has at least 400 horsepower more, it has eight more cylinders, who cares? This is fun. This is such a pure driving thrill. I think you get more out of it more often than you really do in most, if not all, modern supercars. I can absolutely understand why people have a car like this. And if you see it driven spiritedly on the road, I strongly suspect people don't think you're an absolute tool. In the grand scheme of things, this isn't a fast car, is it? But it doesn't matter at all, because it's so engrossing. I mean, the elf has gone, he's a distant memory. He's now the length of the back straight ahead of me. That's what 240 horsepower and 900 kilos does for you. And everything else that car's got. I mean, that car is incredible. But I reckon this is just as good in its own little way. It might even be more, more interesting to drive, more rewarding in a sort of a multifaceted way. Probably maybe better on the road. Mm. Controversial, but maybe. It's all about the engine, this car. I mean, on the road, it's a lovely thing, very comfortable. You'd happily get in it and drive it down to the south of France in a day. Wind noise, there's a bit of wind noise, but I've got everything in here. Air con, lots of leather. I've got Apple CarPlay for flip's sake. I mean, it is as modern as a classic car gets for daily use, but on the track, I'm starting to have to admit defeat now. Those purebred sports cars are getting away from us. Bit of understeer now. Come on. Oh, you fighter. Yes! I know it's not the fastest way, but it's the most fun way. And if you do put limited slip diff in your brochure, and 600 horsepower nearly, and rear wheel drive, and you put a rock ape like me in the car, sorry. <laughs> The only problem I can see with having a car like this, it's just wanting to go racing in it. What a machine. God, it's so good. It's so, so good. It is such a basic, visceral thrill. There's just, what you put in, you get back. What about this one? Just starts to move around a little bit. Even with that weight in the steering, it's feels friendly and manageable in a way you'd never think a 
50 year old 911 could possibly feel. Look where the Jensen is. He's further behind me than the Alpha is in front. I don't think that's bad really for this little old thing. 170 horsepower is going a fairly long way, isn't it? Oh, you fighter. Oh, he almost went the other way. Stop being so silly, James. Where's the 911? No, stop mucking about. I think it's game over for the Jensen now. Come on, you're doing really well, Jensen. I'm having fun, and that's what really counts. Sure, I'm not the fastest, but who needs to be the fastest? When you've got a car with this much character. Go on, you fighter. Silly, silly, silly. So there you have it. Three very cool cars. One is a track weapon, one a lovely road and track compromise, and one a very relaxed cruiser. For more cars like this, new and old, for motor shows, drag races, reviews, and news, the usual call to action applies. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you very soon here or at autocar.co.uk.